Here's everything you might have missed in the House of the Dragon trailer. Welcome to Nerdist News, I'm Maud Garrett, coming to you live from San Diego Comic-Con. They say that every time a new Game of Thrones spin-off is born, the gods toss a coin in the air and the world holds its breath to see how it will land. With somewhere between four and, I don't know, 75 of them in production, it's anyone's guess about whether the future of Westeros will be more on the Valerian Steel or the Starbucks Cup end of the spectrum. On Wednesday, HBO Max laid their claim to the Iron Throne of conquering the Comic-Con conversation by dropping a brand new House of the Dragon trailer just three days before their panel. But instead of dragging things out, pun, let's cut to the chase like a Valyrian steel sword through a White Walker, shall we? We're going to break it all down for you in just a moment. But if you are worried about potential spoilers, or you pride yourself in knowing less than Jon Snow, now's your chance to leave. <laughs> <gasps> okay, let's get into it, shall we? Set nearly 200 years before the events of Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon focuses on the bestuous of the incestuous. Better than the restuous, the Targaryens. Specifically, it centers on the events that led up to the infamous Dance of the Dragons, a civil war that nearly burned House Targaryen to the ground. The central conflict here is a tale as old as time. Who will succeed King Viserys Targaryen on the Iron Throne? Now, one side puts forth Princess Rhaenyra, the firstborn child of King Viserys. Another says that Daemon Targaryen, the rogue prince, you had me at that, is the rightful heir to the throne. Now, unlike the Viserys we met on Game of Thrones, the crown isn't what injures him. <laughs> we see that Viserys cuts his finger on the Iron Throne in this trailer, which is meant to be more of a visual metaphor here. However, he famously cut himself so badly on the throne that he needed two fingers and Amputated in the books. Huh. That's why we read the books for you. You're welcome. With the trailer's focus on Damon losing his claim to the throne, the shot of him standing on a battlefield could be the War of the Stepstones. With the Iron Throne eluding him, Prince Damon joins forces with Corlys Valerian to try and conquer a kingdom of his own in the Stepstones, islands that are in between the coasts of Dawn and Essos. And that isn't Prince Damon's only battle either. No, no. We see Sir Kristen Cole of the King's Watch fighting Prince Damon in a melee. This is likely the tournament where Kristen becomes a member of the King's Watch. We see Cole and six other knights at a private ceremony with Princess Rhaenyra too. While Alison Hightower warns of the dangers of Rhaenyra coming to power, focus shifts to her wearing the symbol of the Faith of the Seven. Now, as we saw during Cersei's reign on Game of Thrones, the Faith is an incredibly powerful political force. Shame. Don't worry, we loved you and Ted Lasso. Thanks to their brutal treatment at the hands of King Maegor the Cruel, the Faith have a complicated relationship with the Targaryens. At this time, the Faith's headquarters were in Old Town, the home of House Hightower, which explains Alicent's connection. But Rhaenyra is also her stepdaughter, and she likely wants her own children to one day take the throne instead. Hey, speaking of her own children, we see one later in the trailer. Mm hmm The man with an eye patch dueling Sir Kristen Cole in the yard is none other than Aemon Targaryen, someone with a very important role to play in the Dance of the Dragons to come. Now, as for that dagger that Alison Hightower is holding, do you think it looks familiar? Fans believe that the dagger she's wielding is the cat's paw dagger from Game of Thrones that was used in the assassination attempt on Bran Stark. And although it's intended to be the same dagger canonically, the prop is different after the original didn't fit the new show's aesthetic. Speaking with Entertainment Weekly, series co-creator Ryan Condal said, it's a line to walk in terms of things that you bring back from the original show and pass in a different way. I think that it's important to have connective tissue there to show people that it is the same world and history reflects on objects and the cast of people and sigils as we move down through time without it becoming too self-referential. As for the dragons in this house, well, the trailer is packed full of them. One of the highlights of the trailer is seeing the fabled Dragon Pit, home to the royal dragons of the Targaryens in King's Landing. We see Princess Rhaenyra's dragon, Cyrax, Prince Daemon's mighty red dragon, Caraxes, and what appears to be Vega, the dragon formerly ridden by Aegon the Conqueror and eventually ridden by Aemond. Just keep your eye on the prize, Aemond. Nope, never gonna happen. 
Anyway, folks, there you have it. That is everything you might have missed in the House of the Dragon trailer. We'll have even more deep dives into Westeros history for you on Nerdist.com as we count down the days until the series premiere on August 21. And we'll have even more updates coming to you from Comic-Con all weekend long. For now, though, tell us, what did you think of the trailer? Did you spot anything that maybe we missed? Let us know in the comments below. And for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, stay tuned to Nerdist.com. You're beautiful.